Hi guys, so in this video we're going to be going over titrations and the stoichiometry behind it. So that means that firstly we'll be going over the procedure of a titration and um, going over exactly what it is. And then we'll be using some calculations to find unknowns that um, titrations are supposed to figure out. So let's start with what a titration is. So a titration is basically uh, a procedure that allows a chemist to to discover the concentration of an unknown analyte. That's what that's what the thing that with the unknown concentration is called. So it involves using a titrant, which we see is in this burette over here, and dripping it slowly into the analyte with an indicator. And when the indicator changes color, then that's when the analyte is neutralized. So let me go a bit more into depth of that. So as you can see, a burette clamp has been set up on a stand, which holds a bur which holds a burette up. So the burette is a very precise um, measuring instrument within chemistry that allows us to calculate um, these. It allows us to calculate the um, initial and final readings correct to um, 0 0.05 centimeters cubed. So the analyte, which is usually about 25 centimeters cubed, is measured using a pipette and pipette bulb, and it basically it's a very precise measuring equipment, though it only measures one um, measurement, and that's usually 25 centimeters cubed. So it draws up the analyte, and it is then released into this conical flask, uh, where the analyte and indicator are shown in this diagram. So the universe, so the indicator, it does not have to be a universal indicator. It can be any type, such as methylene blue or thymol blue. Thymol blue is pretty common. And these indicators basically um, show the transition from an acid to a neutral solution or a base to a neutral solution or vice versa. So what this means is that this, this titration I'm describing over here is an acid-based titration. So an acid-based titration is when um, the indicator changes depending on the pH, and you can use that to find the initial and final readings. So how do you calculate the concentration? So that's what we have to go through first. Well, using the titration, we can find the um, total um, volume of titrant used to neutralize the analyte. So that's step one. Find volume of titrant used to neutralize analyte. So the problem with the titration is that it's quite qualitative. It requires um, you to use your eye to detect the color change, which can be a bit unfortunate because, of course, there are varying amounts of, like, when do you detect the color change? For example, um, what what's classified as yellow when it's finally changed color? Just giving a random color as an example. That's not how what every indicator turns a solution. So that means that the volumes used can be can vary a little bit, but on the whole, it's pretty efficient. So you find the volumes of titrant used to neutralize the analyte, and that can be detected by a color change in the indicator. So that's why um, it's always good to do a rough titration in the beginning um, to get a, a sense of where um, the how much titrant should be used. And then um, next time you do it, you should go much more slowly when you're approaching that value, and then. Um, you can get a more precise amount because the drop that causes the solution to turn a different color signifies it's been neutralized. I should also mention that you should continue to swirl the, the conical flask as the titrant is being added drop by drop because then that means that it's easier to see the color change in general and that the titrant is being mixed in appropriately with the analyte. So the first step is to find the volume of titrant used to neutralize the analyte. That can be found by taking the final reading um, when the solution has been neutralized and subtracting the initial reading from it. Then the next step is to find the moles of titrant. So the moles of the titrant can be calculated using N is equal to CV. So the titrant, we will know the concentration of as shown in the diagram. Um, so the concentration is measured concentration in moles per dm cubed. 
and the volume, which is V, is measured in dm cubed. So the thing about the burette is that it measures it in centimeters cubed, which means that you need to divide it by a thousand to get the volume in dm cubed. This is a common mistake made and that can result in drastic errors. So n equals cv is the formula for the number of moles where n is moles. Let me just write that down. It's one of the formulae you may have learned in GCSE chemistry. All right, now question three is apply molar ratios. So what this means is, let's say, I'll take a very common example. Let's say you had NaOH plus HCl creates NaCl plus H2O. This is a very common titration example. Well, if our titrant was HCl, and we found the moles of, t of the HCl, we have to apply it to the NaOH, and we can do this based on molar coefficients. So for example, in this case, HCl and NaOH have the same coefficient. They're both 1. Everything in this equation is actually 1, which means that the moles are in a 1 to 1 ratio. And therefore, NaOH moles are equal to the HCl moles. However, if the HCl um, had a 2 in front of it and NaOH had 1 in front of it, that means that the molar ratio is 1 to 2. And so the moles of NaOH should be half. So I think the best way to think about it is if you have um, a s'more, if you take a s'more, which requires two biscuits, one piece of chocolate, and one marshmallow. So for every s'more, you would need two moles of biscuits, or two biscuits rather in this case, and one chocolate. So it's in a two to one ratio in this case. So that's how I like to think about it when thinking about the molar ratios. So that's step three. Step four is simple, just calculate the concentration. So as we know, n equals cv, we can rearrange to get c is equal to n over v, where we know what c n, and v are as defined in step two. So we've got the number of moles of the analyte now. So let me make that clear. Two analyte. So we've got the number of moles of the analyte, and we've got the volume of the analyte used. So as I was saying, the analyte is... Um, taken via a pipette, a 25 centimeter cube pipette, and measures that 25 centimeters cubed of the liquid and places it in the flask. So therefore, the volume would be 25 over 1,000, since that's 25 centimeters cubed. So that'd be about 0 0.025 dm cubed. And doing moles divided by the volume will give you the concentration of the analyte. And that's basically it. That's all the steps you really need to know. And you just need to be able to rearrange um, n equals cv to ensure that uh, you are able to work with many different scenarios. So let's look at an example, a simple example that you will need to know. All right, so this is an example of a question you might receive in IB chemistry that you should be able to solve if given. So it takes 83 cubic centimeters of a 0 0.545 molar NaOH solution to neutralize 235 cubic centimeters of an HCl solution. Find the concentration of the HCl solution. So I think it's first important to highlight a couple of things. So firstly, 0 0.45 molar concent concentration is the same as 0 0.45 moles per dm cubed. So we can use the calculations as stated previously in the same way. Now what we need to do is determine our analyte and titrant. So then that way we know what we're solving for. So because we have the um, concentration of NaOH, that becomes our titrant. So NaOH equals titrant because that's the part with the known concentration. Therefore, HCl, which is the other re reactant has to be the analyte. And now to proceed, we should uh, make an equation. This equation will allow us to know what the molar coefficients of NaOH and HCl are, and therefore how we should distribute the moles. So we already know the equation is NaOH plus HCl makes NaCl plus H2O 
as I had written it just previously. But the way we do this is, so first we write down our reactants. And the way we know what products are formed is, well, in GCSC, at least in the C4 unit, we know that when an acid and a base, so the acid is the HCl and the base is the NOH, when they react, they form a salt and water. So one of our products we know is water, which is H2O. And the salt, in this case, would be NaCl or sodium chloride. So the products themselves do not matter, but it's the balancing that the products allow us to do that give us the molar coefficients beside NaOH and HCl that are very important. So in this case, we know that NaOH and HCl are one-to-one -one, since they both have coefficients of one. So what we're going to do is now determine the moles of NaOH. So let's do that over here. Moles of NaOH. So as we know, that's calculated from N equals CV. So in this case, um, our moles is what we're trying to find out. And our concentration is 0 0.45 moles per dm cubed. And our uh, volume is 83 divided by 100. So 83 over 100. So let's just write that down. 83 over 100 times our concentration, which is 0 0.45, is equal to... Oh, and I'm sorry. I meant to write 83 over 1,000 because it's dm cubed. So 83 over 1,000 is 0 0.083, and you multiply that by 0 0.45. So that gives us 0 0.03735 moles. Now let's find the moles of... HCl. So since this is a one-to-one -one ratio, that means that the moles are the same as NaOH, which is 0 0.03735 moles. And now we can find the concentration of HCl, which is C is equal to N over V. That's just rearranging the same equa equation we used in this step over here. So C equals N over V. And if we do that, we get C is equal to 0 0.03735 moles divided by the volume. And the volume is 235, which is the volume of the HCl solution used, divided by 1,000 to make it into dm cubed. So that gives us 0 0.235. And if we put 0 0.03735 divided by 0 0.235 in our calculator, we get... So that's equal to 0 0.158936 dot 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 goes on and on, which is equal to 0 0.16 moles per dm cubed approximately. So I'm going to box my answer to show it's that's the answer I got. So therefore, um, in this in this um, example, the concentration of HCl solution used is 0 0.16 moles per dm cubed. It can also be represented as 0 0.16 m for mol molar, as this was used in the question, this unit. But either way is fine. So this is just an example of how you would approach a titration question. This is a very basic part of stoichiometry that will allow um, future experiments to be a lot easier to use and therefore calculate um, different values for. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful.